What's going on, y'all? This is true. Top of the morning to everybody and salute to everybody. Uh, special shout out to Shay, Shay Batiste, Shay B. Appreciate you, love you, and uh, love everybody. Salute to all y'all. Okay, I had to take a day off. I told y'all uh, with this Howard Burnett, Shondell cousin, and uh, Straight Drop and all that connection and shit, it was going to be deep. All the way back to Texas. So we're going to have to. Uh, I'm going to do this the best way I can. This is going to be um, an epic uh, investigation. Or whatever you want to call it. A uh, query into Sean, I mean, uh, Howard Barnett's absence. His missing. He's been missing since 2017. Right after Straight Drop got released. So we got a lot, lot to talk about. And once again. When I say this shit uh, goes, man, this shit about the man, 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 y'all just don't understand. I just don't understand. So with no further ado, I just wanted to, that was my introduction. And if you haven't watched the last video, if the, if you're just tuning into this, this is the second part out of many, many, many parts. We're going down a rabbit hole, but this time we're going with all facts, 100%. And, uh. If you haven't, it's going to be in the description box, and I will be leaving a link to each and every one of these parts uh, in order as we continue on part two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, et cetera, et cetera. So, first thing I want to do is that, and now I want y'all to listen to me read an affidavit uh, from Howard, of Howard Burnett before so you can understand what this video is about. True. One of the affidavits for um, Rico Barnett, Howard Barnett. This is in no way to uh, tarnish his name or image. He's missing, loved, and all of that. And uh, his, mom, his mama and his supposed to want to know what happened to him. But this is for context about what I'm going to tell y'all in a minute. It's a little blurry, so I'm going to read it. On September 27, 2012. At approximately 13, 15 hours, detectives G. Hiller, Jackson, Henry, and Yancey res responded to a crime <clears throat> responded to a Crime Stoppers complaint of drugs being sold from 4041 Powder Mill Road. Keep their address in mind. Once at the location, the investigators met with Mr. Howard in his driveway. Mr. Howard was explaining the nature of the complaint. The nature of the complaint, at which time he allowed the investigators into his residence to further discuss the complaint. Mr. Howell was then asked by Detective Fox for his consent to search the residence, at which time Mr. Howell consented, both verbally and written. Detectives Hillard and Henry then went to the master bedroom and observed a small, clear plastic baggie which contained a leafy green substance resembling marijuana in the dresser drawer. Mr. Howard was arrested. Detective Henry then further searched the room the initial marijuana was recovered in and located a backpack in the closet which contained several clear plastic baggies of a leafy green substance resembling marijuana. Detective Henry also opened a dresser drawer in an adjacent bedroom and recovered several other small bags of leafy green substance resembling, just say marijuana, shit. Detective Henry also discovered a safe in the same master bedroom the backpack containing a marijuana was found in. Detective Henry then opened the safe which contained several bundles of currency. Detective Hiller later recovered several different denominations of currency from Mr. Howard's pockets. Detective Hiller also recovered two digital scales and a marijuana grinder from the kitchen. Bonus and living rooms. Mr. Howard was, Mr. Howard was then transported to 225 uh, Channel 3 Drive. If y'all don't know what that is, that is the organized crime uh, headquarters, OCU. They also got another one. This one here is directly next to the uh, Channel 3 
news station. If for anybody that remembers, you know. Yeah. Uh, he was transported there for further investigation. Once at the office, Howard was advised of his Miranda rights by Henry and Yancey, which he waived. Howard then stated that the marijuana recovered at his home does belong to him and that he does sell marijuana. That he does sell marijuana. The marijuana rec recovered from the master bedroom dresser drawer did test positive at the property room for TAC and had a weight of 17.6 grams. The marijuana recovered from the backpack also tested positive for TAC and had a weight of 2.6 pounds. The marijuana recovered from the, the adjacent bedroom dresser drawer also tested positive at the property room for TAC and had a weight of 46 grams. The money total $6,296. All this shit was tagged at the property room. And uh, based on these facts, Howard was transported to 201 Poplar for booking and processing. And this incident uh, did occur in Shelby County on September the 27th, 2012. Now let's go. Now. I showed y'all that, I read y'all that to let y'all know two things. Uh, Howard Barnett, Rico, seemed like he was, uh, you know, doing what Dolph did. Now, little flipper man, you know, heavy in the game, right? You see this car, you say he missed his car, so if he riding like that, that would explain a lot of things about Raquel. Since he was 18 and he was 38 years old, right? She attracted to the Baldus. You know what I'm saying? Now, since we on this car, let's go to his van next. I just showed y'all that to let y'all know what we, you know what I'm saying, a little bit so this story can make sense. Now, let's move on to Straight Drop. His missing cell phone and his missing van. And then we'll get back to some most shit. I told y'all this shit deep. Put in a lot of work. Shout out to the team I got. Uh, we on this one. And it's deep. It's deep. I can't stress that enough. That's why we're going we gonna to keep going in, in parts. So y'all better support. Because uh, this shit goes way back to Gotti, his mama, uh, Kamisha. And to Dolph, J Money, lot a lot a lot of layers, lot of layers. Let's go, true. Okay, Howard Barnett took off in this van, July the eighteenth, two thousand seventeen, to go here to this place right here. His cousin house in Germantown, and the reason why. I know exactly where he was going because it's the same reason that I got the address off of his indictment. One, of his, I mean his affidavit where he was selling weed at his cousin's house. So that would be your boy, Shondell. Now, he left. He was last seen about 10 o'clock July the 18th. Headed to his cousin's house in Germantown, which I'm, which you're looking at right now. I just gave y'all the, the cross streets, but it's right there, uh, on that street. Uh, but they say he never made it. Now, they found his cell phone on Jefferson Avenue. That's downtown Memphis. If you know where this 201 popular Shelby County Jail, then you know where Jefferson at. It's, it's the next street over from Poplar Avenue. They found his phone down there. Now, the significance of finding his cell phone only through on the side of the street on Jefferson had me thinking. Why would they find his phone? Why would they throw his phone on Jefferson? And find this van six days later, 60 miles away. We'll get to that in a minute. But let me show y'all 
What a little research to do you if you take your time. That's why I took yesterday off. I did this all day. So once again, I appreciate y'all for every donation I get. Now, Cassie, I'm true results number two. Uh, his phone. So, straight drop, right? Y'all keep hearing his name. You keep you keep knowing that that uh, straight drop girl was fucking with Howard Rico Barnett while straight drop was in lock, locked in jail, right? Matter of fact, let me do it like this. Let's go back to the bowling alley so that I can show y'all this, and then we're gonna come right back to this. True. Shooting that Stray Job got arrested for. We referring back to the beginning, part one. Stray got Stray Job got arrested for shooting inside a bowling alley. Here's the affidavit for that. He went to jail and missed his boot thing, Rakayla. Check this out. Uh, on October, I mean on January thirty first, two thousand and seventeen, officers responded. To a shooting at 1576 South White Station, which is the Billy Hardwick Bowling Alley. Officers, you said blurry. Officers on scene came in contact with Maisha Cook, Justin Nuck Nuckman, and Chad Justice, who advised they had all been shot by a black. By a male black armed with an assault rifle following a large fight. The male gunman had been involved in a large fight when the male went out to his vehicle and received an assault rifle from a vehicle that was in the parking lot. The male gunman then returned to the front door of the bowling alley and opened fire into the business, striking Maisha Cook. Justin Nuckman, Crookman, and Chad Justice. The male gunman then left the scene with a female black in a silver sedan. Maisha Cook suffered from a gunshot wound to her right thigh. Justin Crookman suffered a gunshot wound to his right forearm. Chad Justice was grazed on his right shoulder. Officers also spoke with the victim, Michael Colley, who advised after the shooting occurred, he observed that his gray 2004 Ford F-150 had been shot while parked in the parking lot. Colley advised the total damage to his vehicle was $750. Uh... During the course of the investigation, investigators received an anonymous tip naming Justin Johnson as the shooter. Justin Johnson fit the description of the suspect described by the victims and witnesses. Investigators also viewed the video footage of the incident and could see Justin Johnson match the physical appearance and build of the gunman. Investigators also learned, check this out, investigators also learned that Raquela Hunter was Justin Johnson's girlfriend, get it, and assisted Justin Johnson in leaving the scene after the shooting occurred. Raquela Hunter was located at 3018 Kazaza and brought into the GSB office. Hunter admitted to leaving the scene with Justin Johnson after the shooting. Hunter also advised that she witnessed Justin Johnson shoot into the bowling alley at a vehicle. Hunter positively identified Justin Johnson out of a six person photographic lineup as the shooter in this case. So the story starting to form. This this affidavit right here approves that uh, she was Justin Johnson's girlfriend before he went to jail for this shit 
and she hooked up with Howard Barnett. Now remember, Straight Drop got out of jail uh, in less than six months. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you all that in a minute. But another thing about this is that Brakayla gave a statement and picked her boyfriend out of a six-person lineup and said he was the one shooting. It ain't easy, but it's fair, baby. Straight facts. True. Let go. Okay, y'all seen that. Now back to the van. Now back to the phone and the van. Jefferson Avenue, I just told y'all. Right next door to 201 Poplar Street over. Now, funny thing about the affidavits when you read them is that they, they give you a lot of information. When you look at affidavits, especially the, uh, the second page, the back page, they'll give you your addresses and shit. Now, due to YouTube community guidelines, uh, I'm just going to, what you're looking at is a, a Camaro. Not the not the one that was used in the Mo Three assassination, but it's a Camaro. Now you can clearly see the address. Guess who address this is? This is Strange Drops. One of Strange Drops' address, right? It's the address that was listed on his affidavit. Guess how many? Guess how far away? Howard Barnett's cell phone was found from this address. You're looking at it. It's right around the street. It's right. It's right down the street. This is on Danny Thomas. This 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 place here is off Danny Thomas. Do your own. Do you do your homework? They go to the address and then type Jefferson Avenue. This it is like two miles away from where Howard Barnett uh, Howard Barnett's phone was found at. Is that a coincidence? That straight drive, <laughs> the man phone was found on Jefferson Avenue, walking distance from from your from this location right here. I don't think so. But if you think I'm bullshitting, or you think I ain't, I ain't took yesterday off uh, to do my homework. Oh, these are 100 facts, 100% facts. Uh, there would be no dispute, none of this shit. Ain't no alleged, ain't no hypothetical, ain't nothing but straight work and facts. But check this out. If y'all thought there was something, well then watch this. Listen to this right here. And then I'm going to show you something that's going to really know y'all, let y'all know I ain't playing. Guess what his van was found at and the connection with that shit. Well, first listen to this. True. But what was found that landed dozens of people under arrest. We are standing in front of what's known as Club Maserati. This is the location where Tipton County deputies arrested 28 people over the weekend, including local rapper Moneybag Yo. But according to a Facebook post, he did not stay in jail long. He's an up-and-coming Memphis rapper with a new album. But Moneybag Yo spent time in jail this weekend, along with 27 others, after deputies raided the rapper's album release party and concert. They were lined up on the highway. And Darnell Dow lives near the Maserati Club in Tipton County. He says Saturday night, sheriff's deputies surrounded the club. People, I guess, who had a warrant or something like that, had probation or something like that. <laughs> deputies say the operation was targeting criminal and gang activities, violence, and parole violations. Moneybag Yo, whose real name is Demario White, was arrested on drug and gun charges. In total, 10 weapons, cash, and drugs were seized, and some of those arrested are known gang members from the Vice Lords, Gangster Disciples, Bloods and Crips. This video was posted to White's Facebook page the night the arrest took place. <laughs> reportedly, showing White and others quickly bonding out of jail. Some in the community think the party
party was an easy target for law enforcement. You drink, smoke something, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, what, what, what you going to do it for? Deputies also identified three undocumented immigrants. They did give that information to federal authorities, and another investigation is taking place. We reached out to Moneybag Yo for a comment, but we have not heard back. In Tipton County... Yeah, I'd probably be like, true, what the hell? Money bag, yo, and all them people got arrested down there in Mesa, Tennessee. Got to do with Howard Barnett Van, bro. You tripping? I be like, cash out dollar sign true is our number two, cause uh, you can't trip on one hundred percent fact. And uh, <laughs> the reason why I showed y'all that is because it's so significant that you can't overlook it. The reason why. It's this simple. If you look at what I'm showing you on the screen and you do your homework or you got a team, then you can figure out everything in between. Right? Nama said, gave us the exact address where six days later, his burnt up van was found 60 miles away from Memphis. And that's why I showed y'all that news clipping of uh, the raid in Mason, Tennessee. Because Namus said, Namus is, uh, yeah, when you when you search for information. They said they gave us the exact address. Well, guess what? Since I'm putting this story together with straight facts, then that's what you're looking at. This is the exact feel where the burnt up van was found. Exactly. To the goddamn fucking 10 feet. And the next thing that you're about to see is, as I said, when you take a day off and you really want 100% facts, then you got to do your homework. And it takes a long hell of a time. What you're looking at is a simple map search from how far from where Howard Burnett's van was found at this location. Is it from where the feds busted all, you seen J Money, you seen J Money, you seen Endless Records, you know, Zach, Zach business partner, money bag, yo bosses. He seen money bag, yo. He seen a lot of motherfuckers got busted in this gang, this gang targeted Rico on the way as federal 12 goddamn ATF, everybody in on that shit. But we'll get to the rest of that story later. How uh, Anita Wilson, rest in peace. And got caught up in this shit. Because they was the party promoters. But don't worry about that. Told you. <laughs> Catch that about five or six part series episodes later. But right now. What a coincidence. That Howard Barnett's van. Howard Barnett's cell phone was found. Threw away on the side of the road. Pinged uh, two miles from straight drops. Listed. One of his listed addresses. His van was found six days later. 11 minutes. From where. Moneybag Yo. Had his album release party. Where Jay Money was too. Now. <laughs> remember Covington right. I'm, I'm going to have to end it right here. And keep this flowing. So let y'all marinate on that. But ding ding ding. J Money was killed about two months after this federal raid. He was on the road with Dolph at this time too, right? So he had money bag yo album release party down there getting arrested. And then on a rolling loud tour. You was, you came home. Somebody called, if y'all don't know a little story. When Jay Money was on the road with Dolph, before he got killed, 
he somebody called him back to Memphis, like for one of his partners or something, off the tour. Now this is the same time Key Glock was 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 was, was trying to get in good with Dolph, right? See, Key Glock ain't always been uh, where he at now because obviously he couldn't without the flipper man. So, but you know, 2016. This is this is when uh, Key Glock was trying to get in good, right? Now, if y'all don't know, it's been told to me that J Money was the chosen one, the one that was supposed to be Key Glock. You know what I'm saying? We'll get to that in one of these episodes. But uh, yeah, that's just a little backstory because J Money got busted in his federal raid and, and got killed two months later. And somebody called him back to Memphis off the Rolling Loud tour with Dolph because he was on the road. And I just thought that was information that we're going to have to go down to because somebody did call him back to Memphis. And as uh, soon as he got here, he went straight up to the goddamn strip club and got gunned down about a 38-year-old man. Uh, so we'll get to that later on. But uh, that's why I'm going to end it at. Um, I'm going to show y'all this little clip right here with J Money's. Let y'all know this shit. I'm real about what I'm saying and what I'm doing. We're doing 100% fat. So let me show y'all J Money with um, Dancing with Raquela. So J Money was. So this, uh, this this chick right here, we'll get to it. Obviously, she in deep. But she in deep. So uh, I hope y'all appreciate uh, this part two. Um, know y'all want a part three, and our last time we spoke, I ain't feel a lot of uh, love for this for this work. But uh, this is for his mother, and this shit leads all the way back to Dolph, as y'all can see where it's already going. You know what I'm saying? I got I got it on deck. So this this long little flipper man, uh, salute to everybody, all y'all. And before I leave, for the people that believe. Um, uh, cash app. What's my cash app? Somebody get in the comment section and tell them, man. That man, yeah, he working now. Dollar sign, true results number two. <laughs> For real, this shit is deep. Salute to everybody. I see y'all in episode three. True.